1970, Mr. Harding and his staff of IBM Manufacturing Research Laboratory designed an advanced semiconductor manufacturing system. It was called a Future Manufacturing System, in short FMS. The following manufacturing system concepts were embedded in the design. Automated and mechanized with single wafer processing. In other words, no batch processing. One wafer at a time. Computerized logistic control, process monitoring, and recording. It is a continuous flow manufacturing first in and the first out discipline is implemented in this line. Integrated online measurement capabilities, real-time process control is possible, localized clean environment, therefore we don't need a large clean area saving the building expense, centralized transportation system. A system design based on the above concepts will have the following attributes. With short turnaround time, TAT, or people call them cycle time, with minimum Q. As a consequence, the work in process whip is also minimized. The process precision is achieved so real-time data availability as well as automated control. And the rapid process learning is a consequence of the short cycle time. Product quality optimization is achieved through integrated me measurements, feed forward and backward process control capabilities. High part number production is a natural consequence of the single wafer processing philosophy. Each wafer can be a different part number, and also on same wafer you could also achieve different part numbers. Product yield predictability also can be achieved through the automated measurements and the real-time process control. In 1972, when Bevan Wu was returning from German assignment, he was asked to implement the system as a manufacturing feasibility line. He and his 38 team members, with the help of many other IBMers throughout the company, they have implemented this line completed in 1974. We believe it is the first automated semiconductor manufacturing system in the industry. And this is the story of the FMS feasibility line. The system manufactured 17,000 custom shippable random access memory RAM chips. And these are 1,000 bits chips and trained 135 IBM managers, engineers, and technicians from all over the world. Here is the story. It started in IBM East Fishkill facilities. This line was completed in 1974. The FMS, Future Manufacturing System Feasibility Line, is an automated and mechanized semiconductor manufacturing system. This is an artist's view of what the line should look like. And as you can see, the clean environment is uh, uncovered within those glass windows. Now, we start from develop the components. This is the mini furnace, and we do not wish to use the large furnace. So this is the final version we developed to put on the line. And it will take maximum four wafers. And this is a mechanical wafer buffer. It will hold 40 plus wafers 
in this buffer station. System implementation started in 1973. And you can see in this picture, there is a taxi on the beam. It is the central transportation system, and we call them a taxi. And this is what it looks like when we put in all those process equipment, we call them sectors. And each, this is the facility to supply all the gas and the fluids for the sector, as well as the electricity. And this is, shows a uh, air slides uh, transportation system. And this is what it looks like with about three sectors on one side with the taxi beam over the sectors. This is the maintenance area which maintains the furnace, the mini furnace, in warm temperature. In 1974, we had the whole system in operation. This is a model built by the Legos, brought to me by a German assignee because this is the low-cost way to build a model for the line. That's the taxi railing the pencil is pointing to. This is the first sector. And the sectors are arranged on both sides of the uh, rail. Now, this is the control system for the sector, which is a System 7 computer, or we made a special control system. This is the execution system room and the equivalent to industrial engineer calls the floor shop control room. And this is where the operators uh, enter the information instructions for the line to operate uh, or to monitor the status of the line. The, uh, actually, the whole schedule is uh, uh, originated from the uh, execution uh, control room. And uh, we have an uh, IBM 1800 computer in that room. And also, if you noticed, during that time, we have the uh, car punch in there. This is a uh, schematics for a sector's view. Uh, the two small round holes there are the uh, in and out station interface with the taxi input system. You can see the arrowhead shows how the wafer uh, moves. When the taxi brings a wafer into the input pedestal, and then you get into the first wet process sector, then the second wet process sector, from there on you either go to a furnace for the heat pro process or go into an evaporation for the uh, metal. Right after the hot process or the metal evaporation, we put photo on right away, and after bake, then the wafer is put into the buffer, waiting for the taxi to pick it up on the output station. So this is a, uh, the layout of the sector. Here is how we inputted information for each wafer. And many of you probably uh, still remember that this is called a car punch. So when he prints out each card for each wafer, and then we put them together, that's the sequence of the product we should process in that shift. And this is equivalent to a master schedule. Then he puts this schedule information into the card reader. And from the card reader, of course, it goes into the uh, 1800 IBM computer in the background. Now he sets the whole system in motion. And then he will check, see whether the uh, schedule is exactly what he planned. This is the panel for the uh, System 7 computer to control each sector. And we have a small tape recorder on the top. We use it as a tape input device to input programs. Then from the terminal, it is a electrical telex type of typewriter. Uh, that's we used for human interface. Here he opens up the environment chamber and put into the wafer holder. Then he opens up the box, pick out the uh, wafer cartridge. At that time, we're using four-inch wafers. Now he transfer the wafer carefully into the wafer cartridge. Then he put the input cartridge into the beginning of the line, which is the first sector. Now the wafer step down, 
one of them will be floating on a layer of uh, a nitrogen air. So we call them air slides. So the wafer just slides down the road and goes into the uh, holding pad pedestal. Here comes the wafer. And the vacuum hold down the wafer into position. Now the two uh, arms will come to pick up the wafer one at a time to uh, in increase the throughput. Now the first arm picks up the wafer, hold it, and uh, from the pedestal, at the same time, the pedestal sends a signal, says the wafer left me. Go into the first processing tank. The tank is designed for only process one wafer only with fresh chemical. When the first wafer left, the second come in waiting in queue. Wait for the second uh, wafer handler to pick it up. And as you can see now, the first wafer, after processed a certain distance, then the second wafer begins its own journey. Now the first wafer will pass through different kind of chemical tanks as well as dried nitrogen cleaning. And after it dried up, clean up the wafer surface, then the uh, wafer ho uh, handler will bring this wafer into an intermediate pedestal. And this pedestal also registers the wafer's arrival. Then the central computer system knows this wafer has arrived and finished all the wet process. And we have a Bernoulli kind of wafer handler will not touch the wafer surface, but will lifting it from the pedestal and put this one into a quartz boat. And this boat, after receiving from one to four wafers, will be ordered to go into the first furnace for initial oxidation. As you can see, the uh, previous batch of wafer has finished the uh, initial oxidation, so it's come out. We'll put this one into a buffer station area and then put the fresh wafer in. And this is a mini furnace. We jack up the electricity, goes into the furnace, and immediately reach the uh, steady state temperature for the wafer. And uh, the, uh, the, the oxidation time is about uh, half hour. So we can change the uh, temperature as well as the oxidation time very quickly to suit different part numbers requirements. Now the second boat fresh wafer is coming in. Then the quartz pusher will push this boat into the mini furnace. And at the same time, the finished previous batch oxidized wafer will go into the position for the Bernoulli handler come to pick the wafer up for photoresistor coating. Because we coat photoresistor right after the oxidation, so the adhesion and the reliability and cleanliness is assured. So when this boat is moved into the position, you see the Bernoulli handler picks up the one wafer, then goes into the uh, photoresistor dispensing area. Here comes the wafer into the temporary holding station, which in a way it is a buffer of one wafer. Now the mechanical handler comes here, picks up the wafer from by the back of the wafer. Therefore, the front of the wafer is not touched. This whole area is under clean environment. Now the wafer goes into the photoresistor dispensing area. Now here comes the dispenser, dispense the photoresistor of right amount and start spinning to make the correct thickness of a photoresist on the wafer. And after the uh, coating, then the holder will lift up this wafer, put this into a uh, small 
we call mini uh, hot plate to do the dry, dry out the uh, solvent in the photoresist. And so this motion of this mechanism is uh, relatively slow in order not to jar the wafer or damage the wafer. So now the wafer is in the, on the hot plate. And after the baking, then we put into the air slides transportation. And this air slides transportation will hold about 30 wafers in this air slide buffer. And each position will hold one wafer. The positioning of the wafer and the control of the motion of the wafer is by those light pipes you see bending over the position and use the light sensing to uh, place the uh, vacuum, hold the wafer from the backside. Now the taxi is ordered to come to this sector to pick out the wafer from the output pedestal of the buffer. And this taxi has a cover at the end of the pickup fingers, which is in the clean environment. Now, next the wafer is waiting in the output staging. Now, the uh, taxi will bring this wafer into the photoresist uh, exposure area. Since the exposure machine at that time, we planned on to use the E-beam, but the E-beam wasn't ready, so we still use a, a human-operated manual station. So after she finished the exposure, the taxi picked this wafer up, goes into sector number two, and put into the input pedestal of sector number two. Now the wafer handler comes over, picks up the wafer, then brings the wafer into the first tank, which is the development solution. Develop the photoresist pattern just exposed by the exposure sector. And after the development, it will go into the fixing process. And after the fixing process, it will go into the uh, uh, washing, cleaning process. And after the cleaning process tank, then the wafer will be transported into the drying tank. Here we have the two uh, warm nitrogen, clean nitrogen air knives to clean up the wafer. Then the wafer is put into the one wafer buffer, which is a uh, interstation. Uh, then the signal also sent to the computer says this wafer has finished develop. Now we have another Bernoulli head come over to pick this wafer up, put on this large hot plate. This hot plate slowly rotating. The rotating time is exactly the time we needed to bake this developed wafer. And uh, here is what we call the online integrated measurements. Use the wafer interference, use the light interference principle to control the etching time of the oxide. So we use a light pipe on the side of the process tank. So use the light, go through the light pipe, and then shining into the surface of the wafer. So as the wafer's oxide being etched, then the interference pattern of the light changes. At the right time, we'll bring the wafer out. So therefore, we will not under etch nor over etch the wafer. Now the wafer handler comes, pick the developed and the post-baked wafer into the etching tank. Now here is the actual uh, trace of this etching. We call them endpoint detector, etch endpoint detector. So when the needle goes up, that means it's the time for the wafer to get out from the tank. This is how we optimize the etching time, the process for each wafer. That is the reason why we can estimate what the yield should be. And after the processing, we'll place the wafer again into the diffusion 
boat. And all these wafers will rest on the quartz boat again. And this quartz boat will go into the next diffusion furnace. It is, again, another mini furnace. All these furnaces are the same construction, same size, and we have spare furnaces in the maintenance room. As soon as one of the furnace has problem, and within half hour, we can change a furnace and back into business. So therefore, the downtime for the line to uh, be kept in minimum. And this is, again, and when we don't have a full boat, uh, if the timing is right, we still, the computer will give the order, go into the furnace. And here the taxi does its job. Then bring this wafer again into the uh, next sector. All these logistics is controlled by the uh, central computer. Now, here we have two mini furnaces, and we are doing the final, that's the N-type uh, diffusion, and finally, we have the phosphor glass uh, doing the uh, temperature ramp up process. We can change the temperature of the mini furnace uh, very quickly. So therefore, we can combine two heat process into uh, one furnace. In other words, we can do one hot process in one temperature, a uh, lower temperature, then Immediately, we can pump in more electricity, then the furnace will be jacked up into the higher temperature to do a phosphor glass process. So then in this way, we save the one furnace. And this one here, since the two hot process is doing in sequence, and we have two mini furnaces right in the same sector. Here again, the wafer is coated with uh, photoresist and put into a transport. And this transport this time will transport this wafer into a mechanical buffer because this is a feasibility line. We are trying out all kinds of different buffer. Previously, you have seen the air slides buffer, but right now you're seeing a mechanical uh, buffer. It's almost like an elevator. So when the wafer is getting to the right position, it'll step up for one position, and the computer will remember which wafer is this and at what position. Now the boat is coming back and wait for the next wafer. So this is the uh, finish of all the uh, hot process. And the taxi will pick this wafer up. Now we'll go into the sector number four, which is the uh, uh, metallization sector. We'll put the metal on top of the wafer because the wafer already has opened up uh, contact holes and are ready for the metallization. And you see this uh, plexiglass type of uh, environment chamber. And uh, here is the operator can uh, either give instruction to the system or to uh, inquire the status of the line. And the next step is to put the metal on the wafer. Usually, we use the large, huge uh, uh, vapor deposition type of uh, uh, evaporator. It takes long time to pump down. Uh, that makes the cycle time long. So this time, we are using a small, we call them mini evaporator, only evaporator, one wafer at a time. The chamber is always kept under low pressure. And so when we open up the system to receive a wafer, we only open up the top chamber. It's very small. When we put the wa wafer in, and the pump down time of this uh, uh, small chamber is uh, very short. Now the chamber opens up, and the wafer receiver is a platform with spring-loaded finger is ready for the Bernoulli arm to bring a wafer in. Now this wafer is put on the pedestal. Now it's clamped down. Now the door shuts with vacuum seal, your O-ring on the side. Then start the pump down. From pump down, evaporation, and complete 
the required thickness of the aluminum evaporation only takes six minutes. And this is the uh, heat uh, rod to heat up the wafer surface before we uh, el evaporate the uh, aluminum, aluminum silicon uh, layer on top of the wafer. And now, after the uh, evaporation of the metal, now we immediately put the photoresist on, just like we do, did in the uh, hot process sectors. And then this wafer at this point is, uh, after the exposure of the metal pattern, is ready for etching in the aluminum etch. And uh, since the aluminum etch is very thick, uh, they, their bubbles can be uh, uh, adhere to the surface, so we shake it up, and so we shake the wafer and make sure during the etching uh, there's no bubble on the surface. We also use the same optical principle to monitor the etching time when the aluminum will be thrown. So the infrared goes through the uh, uh, space if the aluminum is etched, so you see the uh, transmission increase to the point, then we stop the etching process. So therefore, if you have a thick Aluminum will etch it longer. If you have thinner aluminum, will etch it a shorter time. Uh, that is again is a real-time process control, so we can optimize the process tailored to each wafer, and that this is another reason we can predict the wafer yield. This is the actual etching time, and as you can see, now we etch through the pattern, and uh, in order to etch it clean, so we let it etch a little bit longer, and then when the needle takes off, that means it's all etched nicely, and we take the wafer right out from the uh, etching tank, goes into the washing, the quenching tank, so to speak. So these are the online real-time process control principle designed in this line. And after all the rings and the cleaning, then this wafer is again put on a pedestal, register its position, and now this wafer is ready for annealing. In other words, go through a furnace to heat it up, make sure this uh, metallization le level uh, is uh, uh, thick and ready uh, for probing. And the Bernoulli uh, handler, again, is used in this station. It looks like a worm. It comes up and going to gobble up the wafer, but without touching it. Pick up the wafer, we'll put it into a continuous mini furnace. As you can see, this furnace is very small, just to have a uh, stainless steel uh, belt chain. And uh, when you put the wafer on it, the speed is controlled by the program from the uh, computer. And just at the right time to anneal, we call anneal this wafer, and make this wafer ready for testing. As you can see, this is a memory chip wafer has all the memory chips on it. And after the furnace, the wafer will be put into an output cassette. This is the end of the line, and the wafer is ready for final testing.